Come unwrap some holiday magic this season in Denver, where the lights are brighter and the shopping is grander. The shows are more spectacular, the trees taller, the festivities merrier. So come for your holiday traditions or make some new ones with your friends and family in the Mile High City, where the season feels a whole lot more wonderful. Discover great hotels and more things to do at milehighholidays.com. This holiday season, recharge with the Planet Fitness Black Card for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. So instead of fighting a stranger in the mall over a stuffed T-Rex, bring a friend for free and work out on the TRX. Instead of freezing in line for a lame holiday deal, relax in the Black Card Spa with some Hydra Massage feels. Instead of being trapped at your in-laws, <laughs> escape to any of our 2,400 Planet Fitness locations. Sign up today for the Planet Fitness Black Card. Just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Cancel any time. Deal ends November 30th. See club for details. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and, believe it or not, pop culture. Folks, we're back. We're back with Magic Voice Chris. Very happy to be back with you, Chris. This is the Pop Quiz, Part 3. This time, it's a personal reckoning of revenge. Boogaloo. Actually, what you wrote, Israel, is part three. This time, it's the last time before the next time. That's the redemption time of the final sacrifice that's personal. (laughs) That's I forgot I wrote that. Yeah, I was figuring. I like that. I left it in there. This is one of the episodes that's one of my favorite because, A, it's just really fun to record and think, and it's... B, it's super easy to do because it's just, you know, do a movie thing and we don't have to think critically (laughs) about, you know, very extensive and detailed episodes. So I look forward to doing this for the third time just because we're going to do it again. I think all the audience, especially people that have been listening since the beginning, know that you guys, your favorite episodes are the ones where you don't have to do any kind of prep. Oh, yeah. No, those are the best. (laughs) I think think there's one thing they know. It's that Israel loves aliens. But if there's two things they know, it's that Israel loves aliens and Cameron loves World of Warcraft and Lord of the Rings. And if there's three things they know, (laughs) it's that Israel loves aliens, Cameron loves Lord of the Rings, and you guys don't like preparing for episodes. Not that you don't, don't. but you you will always take that not preparing for an episode. Um, Yes. Which is fine. Honestly, I I like this one too because it's more of a conversation. Um, Okay, so... We're doing another pop quiz episode, and the rules are simple. I'm going to give you a scenario from pop culture, and then you say how you'd handle it. Easy. If it were any easier, it'd be a coloring book. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Are we ready? Have you ever tried to draw There's inside the lines? There's a joke in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that I easy. Have. I, have a, I have a two-year-old, so I, I know all about not drawing in the lines. Um, <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. So scenario number one. And this time I tried to make it a little more broad. I feel like in the past I made it so specific that there was only one option for what you could do. Which was basically what they did in the movie or other pop culture scenario. Yeah, or you just had to do the opposite. Um, So I just tried to leave it a little more open-ended this time. We'll see how that works out. So scenario number one is the opening to Resident Evil. The very first Resident Evil. Have you played this, Cameron? No. I was honestly, when you said the opening to Resident Evil, I was thinking about the... What the two thousand two movie with what Mia Jovovich? Yeah, with me. Have you seen that yeah. one? We could do either. Oh one, yeah, no, I've seen that one. But the game, I'm I'm reading the scenario. and It sounds fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, why so, don't we go with that? Because that that actually might you might come up with some really interesting scenarios. Because I'm gonna be like, well, first I would avoid this room because I know that's where the snake is, and then I would go back to the pool <laughs> and I'd get the little crest and I'd put the crest in the pool and turn the crank and go down to the secret lab. And I, I'd play Moonlight Sonata on the piano to open the door. <laughs> and I'd wait for my commander to betray me. Yeah. Um, no, that's why I'm trying like to go broad. Back here. <laughs> <laughs> but so this is, the, this is the scenario, okay? You've been sent in as an elite 
unit to find, I think it's another team. And you can correct me at any point, Israel. You, another team was sent to this place, and you're going to yep. find them. Yep. All right? And you're immediately attacked by something outside. Like the helicopter lands, and people just start getting taken down. And it looks like yeah. a dog, but it doesn't look like a dog. So you run into this house, and while poking around in the house, you discover what seems to be zombies. <laughs> what do you in do? In the house. In the house. Yeah, you're, outside, you're in the house. You know that there's something outside that just murdered some of your team, most of your team. Yeah, okay. Joseph! Yeah, the helicopter crashed that dropped Chicken you off. Chicken Heart Vickers left us behind. Yeah. So you're you're in this house. You find a zombie. What do you do? Uh, first of all, kill the I, zombie. I have to stop smiling first. Um, <laughs> is it the drink? Yeah. Is it the? No, I'm saying like I see a zombie. I'm like, oh, it's go oh. time. I gotta <laughs> take the grin off my face first. I Maybe gotta like. Not. All this right, I guess one of those scenarios where your aggression is very welcome. You know, it is. Um, so see a zombie right off the bat. Do I have like my composure of who I am today? It, or is this yeah. like yeah, it, it's always I like to think of these situations it's always you in that situation it's not necessarily the character because mm -hmm. if you're that character then it kind of there is kind of only one way through that situation which is how it plays out but right. if it's I you so you I can call as many zombies. audibles as you want you know okay and yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that like since i'm on an elite team i still have all my equipment so i got like a weapon and whatever yeah, like a probably primary and secondary you know okay you've got a pistol with five bullets and you have to you conveniently find bullets hidden throughout the house oh, also but herbs which you mix together to, well to start okay. you start that's how it starts right you have the gun with five bullets right yeah because you much, were you yeah. you lost your your, your primary outside and you were shooting your pistol, so you're down to five bullets in your gun. I'll, I, okay. I will let's let's include that because if okay, I say otherwise, I'm you have like your I'm full, have a full combat load. Because otherwise, I was going to say first of all, even though I have a full combat load, I put my rifle down and I draw my hatchet. <laughs> That's what I first do once I find the first Chris, zombie. Yeah, Chris Redfield in the in the games. I think you either already have a knife or you find it pretty quickly. But uh, my my first instinct is to like. So we're in this house. We know, obviously, about this house a little bit because this is, you know, from what I know, remember the game, we know of the estate. It might Is it the Spencer Mansion? But, like, we've never been here before, but it's, like, this kind of talked about kind of urban legend, and now we're actually here. I'm thinking of, like, how far away we are from civilization, like, where the nearest maybe, like, ranger outpost is or the nearest, you know, uh, ro you know a serviceable road. Like, I want to get out of there, but I know that we're trapped inside. So I'm thinking we're doing like a lot of room clearing, you know, to try see if there's like a phone, you know, someplace we can use to like uh, co communicate back in town with like, you know, the station, the, the the headquarters that we have. You know, that's like my first instinct. You know, we're doing a lot of room clearing, <laughs> you know, watching out for other zombies, trying to find other weapons and other things that we can use. Maybe a chemical, like a cleaning closet. We can get some chemicals together, make some makeshift things, because I'm assuming I know how to do that kind of stuff in this scenario. <laughs> well, of course you do. Uh, but are you sitting there? Are you trying to like solve the mystery? Or are you trying to GTFO? I mean, I, I'm trying, I feel like if we, we were underprepared for this particular scenario, like we went to go find our team and then we find out the fate of our team, this other team, and they're gone. So we are outnumbered and we are running low on supplies. So my, my, my first instinct is the GTFO. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's to try to find a way out of there. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. sitting in the middle of this giant mansion being like, wow, this mansion, uh, there's so, it's so much more to it. You know, there's these hidden rooms and whatnot, uh, with, with traps and other, you know, <laughs> we maybe encounter some more other zombies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to resupply. I suppose if the scenario was kind of like how the game is where we can't get out and we are only pushed further and further into the kind of the mystery, the mysterious interior of the house, you know, that eventually it would have to be, your thinking evolves into like, well, there's obviously more to this and there's more to our, the death of our teammates than previously believed. So there might kind of rise up within me this, uh, you know, sense of like, uh, you know, we got to do this for our teammates. Like there's something more going on. There's a conspiracy happening. Maybe we found like a couple of the rooms that have like the science equipment in it. We're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not, uh, you know, if our buddies, if they died for some sort of like government or corporatism cover up, 
then then that wells up within me like that sense of you know like we gotta figure this out you know what i mean yeah but it would have to it would have to be something that we you know it's like discovered kind of along the way you know what i mean i got you I mixing think... a lot of herbs a lot of red and green herbs mixing what about herbs. you Cam? something in the game mixing herbs. yeah those are that's yeah. how you make uh medical that's how you make first aid uh, i got gotcha. you <laughs> Well, I think yeah, like there's the not there's no just health aid. lying around. You have to no. There's no boxes of first aid kits lying around. That's actually yeah. there might be. There are. Yeah, those are like very rare though. I'm there's sure herbs, and you also have to mix like just, herbs. Sometimes you get poison, and you have to mix stuff to like fix the poison. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. For it's me, fun game. <laughs> fun game, man. Let's see. Iconic. Yeah. So we get in. I think the first thing I do is immediately establish a foothold, like somewhere safe. <laughs> Where, you know, we can kind of, you know, lay low for a second, get, you know, our bearings in order. Just like, I mean, to me, it, it doesn't change from like training to, you know, clear buildings in combat. Whether, you know, you run into a, a stick, it doesn't really make sense to go into a fight where you don't know what's happening until you get to basically what we say, take a tactical pause. Mm -hmm. So get in the building, establish a foothold, establish 360 security, get accountability. The same thing. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm going to slow you down right there. You're by yourself. Oh, what? I thought I'm an elite team. team. No, no. An elite team landed outside. You're the only one that made it inside the building. Oh, we're not together. You're flying solo. Yeah, you're flying solo, bros. Oh, Uh. see, that was totally that was totally left out there, Chris. Okay, let's see. Oh, to find another team, you're immediately attacked by something. You run to a house. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I thought okay. you meant like the, pl- the collective you. Like the pl- I see. Yeah, I thought you meant no, like I the mean, team if you wanted to be both of you guys together as a team, that's fine. But you don't have like 10 people. I got you. Okay, well, You're that not changes. setting up 360 I mean, that doesn't anything. Change. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't change a lot. I think it would still be the, the, the principles of what I started off. So basically getting in. Find a safe spot. Make sure it's clear. Kind of take a pause. Figure out what's happening. Conduct seals. You know, <laughs> Stop not it. a lot of people no. know what li- what seals is. It's super overlooked. But yeah, it's exactly. What would you say it was, Izzy? Let Stop. The people look, know. Listen and smell. Yeah, just like take five, ten minutes. Just kind of you know ingest the yeah. surroundings around you. Right. Use all your senses. Like yeah, stop, look, listen, smell. Seals Hold on, wait. Right there, right? Stop, stop, look, at- listen, and smell. Smell. Yep. Yep. Smell is a big thing. What are you Just smelling what? for? Uh, cigarette smoke, fire. Yeah. Any oh. evidences of p- f- f- human activity around? Yeah. People oh, smell fascinating. like shit. People smell like <laughs> yeah. Shit. Dead, dead, dead poop, rotting yeah, corpses they poop, walking they around. Yep. Yeah. Maybe, yep. Someone was, maybe someone smoking a cigarette up when. Muscly like, lizard gorilla smell. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they establish camp and you smell like a little, like their fire that was burnt, like burnt wood. So smell, of course. Use all your senses to gather intel, Chris. Um, but yeah, just kind of establish full, kind of figure out what's going on. And then, yeah, just like Izzy said, very methodically, since I'm, I'm doing a one man clear now, just kind of like, Going room to room, figuring out what the hell is happening, using the windows, maybe get to a high vantage point, mm. um, you Check know, surroundings. yeah, to kind of like get an idea of what's happening, not only in the building, but what's around the building. Like, I- I'm assuming if, you know, the dog was outside, dogs can't, if I'm like, oh, it looks like a dog thing. Like, I'm assuming it's not on the roof because like, <laughs> whatever. And that's just like a risk versus reward thing. So I'd rather risk getting to a high vantage point. And like getting the reward of, you know, all this information and intel coming toward me than, you know, having that negative part where this fucking dog can climb like a motherfucker. (laughs) And uh, he's on the roof. He's on the roof. I think at that point, like, I don't know, like everyone's dead. I'm by myself. I would just go to survival mode. Like I would go the opposite of Izzy and be like, holy shit. Like I just need to survive until like, you know. I uh, come across other people and can gain more intel and then maybe band together or let's see what this is about. So I wouldn't actually go into this like solve this mystery as to what's going on (laughs) or how did this happen. That's like the last thing on my mind. You know, basic primitive instincts. Survive. So that's me. (laughs) And then once I'm like, you know, feeling good and I'm like, I feel like I have survived. Maybe that question comes into my head is how did this happen? And do I have the power to, you know, help? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you wouldn't. You're not really playing the game. You're just. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a survival. bad way. I just mean like you're like, no, I'm going to live, <laughs> and whatever happens, they can send in another team later. But that's not me. 
Yeah, until then, once they get a little bit more info, maybe, you know, call me or something, but, you know. <laughs> I'll join the next team when they're here, and I'll tell them, yeah. before we get off the helicopter, there's something you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't there's... land here. You're getting murked yeah. by this dog Yeah, get a, have, hope you have a brave climb. helicopter pilot. Yeah, let's yeah, fast may rope may onto the roof of the house. Climb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Climbing yeah. dogs. Yeah, don't, yeah. Try not to crash. Hi. We'll halo in this time. The funny part is, is when you start talking about the dogs, like... As you're playing the game, you think, yeah, there's these shambling zombies. And you're like, ah, it's fine. I, I'm fine. But then you, you get to this part where you walk through this hallway and the dogs jump through the windows. And holy shit, like, it terrified me when I was playing it the first time. Like, scared me legitimately. And I was freaking out because I'd never played a video game like that. Yeah, it kind of it kind of birthed the whole survival horror genre, I think, you know? Yeah, I feel that way, yeah. Yeah. But oh, cool. all right, so Izzy solves a mystery. He he Scooby Doo's it, and <laughs> Cameron's like, I "I'm just gonna live, it. and I'll come back later if there is a later." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, that's, that's fair. No, that's fair. All right, great, great recap. I love it. Um, scenario number two. So this is from Captain America: Civil War, and basically on this one, you need to choose a side. And this is it. This is towards the end of the film. I'm assuming Cameron, you've seen. Captain America Civil War? Yes. Okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, they All right, so Iron you have to choose that. a side. You find <laughs> out that Bucky is responsible for the death of Tony Stark's parents. Do you defend him, or do you help Iron Man? Like This is at the end. Yeah, this is right at the yeah. end. Yeah. So, if you defend him, how would you have fought Iron Man differently or tried to get Bucky free? Or, if you decide to help Iron Man, how would you have helped? Hmm. Well, isn't that a tricky scenario? Because like, since the Winter Soldier was like, you know, a, what what is it? What are they called? Where are they? they he was like activated. Yeah, he was like brainwashed yeah. at the time. Yeah, he was like an so like, like he wasn't himself. Ultra he wasn't kinda. Bucky. Yeah, yeah, he exactly. wasn't Bucky when he killed. Well, Tony and that's Stark's why parents. Captain America defends him. But yeah, yeah, you know, so like, he still I, and kill plus his he's like, if I'm putting myself in the shoes of Captain America, Captain Cam, now, um, it's like, yeah, I think I would do the same thing that he would do. Ooh, uh, hold on, wait, before I lose it. Captain Cam or Captain Camerica? Camerica. Ah. Captain Camerica. Camerica. Captain Camerica. Captain and the Israel soldier. And the Israel soldier, yes. <laughs> All right, Very sorry, go ahead. Just like, that just makes me sound like a, the Israeli soldier. Like, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm Israeli like some 18-year-old like, kid yeah, just doing his, doing his four around. years or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of a, Instead of a regular old red, white, and blue shield, you have the Star of David on your shield. Yeah, it's just the Star of David. <laughs> in a blue, it's a blue shield with the Star of David. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the thing somebody with, had to have done that already. Yeah. I'm well, sure. I think, I'm like, sure that being is. Cap, uh, Cap actually has superpowers. You know, he's like genetically enhanced. I don't really respect Tony Stark that much as like a warrior, just because he's like he's not. The second you take off that suit. Like you are nothing, man. You That's are exactly absolutely. what he says to him in uh, the first Avengers movie. Oh, like, really? Without that suit, what are you? He's like, you know, I'm really billionaire rich. philanthropist genius. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> but like, does it hurt any less when I deck you in the face with my shield being a billionaire? No, it doesn't at all. Um, so, like, I, you know, Captain America. I think, yeah. I mean, they proved it. Like, they really kicked his ass at the end. But it was a double team. Well, so let's um, let's start with the first question then. Whose side are you taking, Israel? For me, you go yeah, first. I'd take. I'd have to take Bucky's side. I just my inherent. There's like you know. There's a part of me that's like I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. You know, I want to be uh, compassionate, and everybody gets a second chance, or a third chance, or a fourth chance. You know, or five uh, or six, five or six chances. But uh, so I, six. yeah, because I, I feel like you know, I mean, we're all like supposed to be on a team. We're supposed to be able to talk these things out. I know at that point they're they they've already fought once, you know, but uh, you know I'd, I'd have to take Bucky's side because if we know what we know by now that he was brainwashed, then I, I'm I'm immediately sympathetic towards Bucky anyway. Yeah. Okay, Cameron. Um, I think I know your answer. Yeah. No. I mean, I would take Cap's side just because I think he's the strongest out of everybody. So I'm like, I don't want to fight that guy. And then <laughs> also, I would just see. Survival the fittest. Yeah, I would see that. What's the arrow guy's name? Hawkeye. Oh, 
Hawkeye. Hawkeye. I'd see that Hawkeye's on that team and also the bird dude is on that team and be like, oh, these guys are going to need some help. Yeah, because they're the lamest of all the Avengers. Like you shoot a bow and arrow. You don't even have special abilities. I don't like the watching the one. My one thing about the Marvel Universe is like the fact that all these henchmen and they fight guns all the time. Yet this dude has never been like shot or whatnot with a bow and arrow. Like I've seen him utilize cover and everything. You know, he's just a normal guy that has a bow and arrow. Like it's not that cool. Like but Robin he's Hood. Really good. But he's, he's really so good, good with at it, it though. Yeah. Yeah. He never That's misses. like saying like an Olympian, you know, an Olympian swimmer like can't get killed by a shark or something, you know? It's like <laughs> uh, you know I what love that your, was your actually hot take. <laughs> a bit of trivia, you know, Joss Wheaton originally in uh, I think Avengers Age of Ultron originally wanted um Hawkeye to die. But yeah. they had they had uh, what's his name die instead. They had Quicksilver die instead. Mm. But uh, so you almost got your wish, Cameron. Almost. But remember, Plus we're we talking got, like, about it at the end. We're not talking about the airport fight scene. We're talking about the very end when they're in the silo in Russia. Yeah. yeah okay. Because okay. so in not this position, there. you are Captain yeah. America. So I'm Captain America. Yeah. Okay. I'm so confident. then, uh, what I'm okay. doing? You both sided with Bucky. Line. What? How would you? Have, what would you have done differently in that fight? Mm. Absolutely. Oh, I don't know. Well, how do, I kind of forget is he fill me in here? Like when they, like they spare, you know, Iron Man, right? They spare him, or do they? Yeah, they knock him out the or end. something. Yeah, right? yeah, they kind of double team. They really at first they're trying to escape, you know, uh, but then they're kind of trapped in there because they're in the bottom of that missile silo, and uh, then they team up on him and they really get him on the ropes. And Captain America has the thing where he has a shield and he's about to hit yeah, him with crack. it. Kind of hits to the side. You know, or he hits him in the chest and he shuts down his suit, you know. Yeah. And then he leaves the shield behind, you know. Um, I mean, yeah, I I feel like they uh, the thought process in that in that uh, scenario is pretty straightforward. You know, he, Iron Man has all these different weapons. Uh, he's got, you know, and so, you know, trying to avoid that. You've only got one ranged weapon and that's only if it happens to bounce back at you, <laughs> you know, using that as a shield. Uh, to try to get Bucky out of there. I thought that was pretty responsible, you know, responsible of him. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's hard, it's, it's, it's hard to come up with um, different ways to fight Iron Man. Uh, you've, you know, you can try to, well, you can't shut the lights off on him cause you can see in, in night vision. Uh, cause he's got all this technology on his, on his, on his, uh, I mean, side, but like, you know? I think Bucky almost think gets away out of the top of the silo, you know? Yeah. So maybe... we're forgetting about one of the most important people on Captain America's team here. The one that has the, the most overpowered of all the Marvel superheroes. Can you take a guess? It's Ant-Man? Yes, or... it's Ant-Man. It is 100% Ant-Man. Oh, because Ant he just goes inside. He just goes and inside just and expands. enlarges himself. Yep. And boom. Just like in The Boys, season three. Yep, literally. He would just boys him. Like, I mean, <laughs> boys. Him. Yeah, I mean, that's how they did you. We've talked about this, the, the fan theory of how they should have killed Thanos like immediately. <laughs> they just had Ant-Man go inside. Yeah, literally Ant-Man. Yeah, crawled up his asshole and then just expanded to like mega and just kills him <laughs> like right off the bat. I think they did you guys see the what if the zombie? What if mm -hmm. I thought they did a pretty good job of of. Uh, I mean, I don't know, like how the heck. Thanos becomes a zombie at the end and he's got the infinity gloves also. It's like, that's not a very hopeful scenario, but, <laughs> uh, but that's, that's what the what ifs are for. That's what the what if universe is for. You literally have anything happen. Yeah. But what if Israel, him snapping his fingers, <laughs> what if he didn't actually know how to control the infinity stones? So when he snapped his fingers, it made everybody into a zombie, including himself. And he was like, Oh that, fuck. That could have happened. Maybe his, that maybe he happened. got bit, and as he turned, he snapped, and he was just thinking zombie, you know? Yeah. Although that's not how, like, in the, the dead. comics, the Marvel Zombies comics, that's not how it really happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's they kind of get... a Marvel get... Zombie comic? Yeah, you should read it. It's good. It's actually... I there's some very upsetting this. parts. <laughs> <laughs> but, what do you uh, mean, upsetting? I mean, I don't want to see Spider-Man killing children, <laughs> but uh, that's right. what happens now in the I have comics. To read it. Yeah, now yeah. I have to know. Yeah, like child zombies. They're no, just kids. he's a zombie. Just regular kids. and they're regular. Oh, oh he's really? Eating he's eating. And he's yeah. Eating? It's it's. There's just some messed up stuff that happens. It's, I mean, it's isn't good that read, like though. what it's a spider would do though? 
That's eat what children. A spider would do. I yeah, guess like a they made a spider. web. Yeah, sure. Yeah. A zombie spider. It would eat children. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. So then, me. I guess you're saying you wouldn't. There's nothing. There's no way for you to really improve on the the situation at the end of Civil War. Like you wouldn't yeah, have done, I mean, like you wouldn't have just immediately tried to incapacitate Iron Man, like start Absolutely. beating the shit out of him while Bucky runs away. Because he doesn't do yeah. that. He just he tries to play him soft. Would you have gone harder yeah. to start? Yeah. So I don't think, you know, trying to, you know, soft dick Iron Man would be like <laughs> the solution there. Immediately destroy him and then talk to him afterwards and humble him and be like, you ever do that again, it'll be way worse. So we're going to ten on Iron Man. Going to ten immediately. Just Maybe push 10. It to eleven. Not trying to like talk to him at all or slow him down. Just immediately go. He's gonna like mess us up if we don't do something. Just immediately just wail on him. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right I like that. that. I think yeah. Bucky gets away in that situation. Yeah, yeah. and then you don't have that big fight down in the the tunnel or whatever it is. Okay, yep. we don't just avoid it. Soft battle, like I like it. So go immediately go to ten on Iron Man. That's that's the answer. Mm. Uh, all answer. right. Scenario number three. This is from Point Break, the original one. Oh, man. The, the, the only Point Break. The only one. Uh, and this is the bank robbery scene. All right. So you're you're Johnny Utah. You're an FBI mm-hmm. agent. You've been coerced Johnny into robbing a bank with the ex-presidents. How are you going to handle that situation? <laughs> All right. Do you find yeah. a way to stop them or do you go along with it in hopes that you can get them later? And I will consider answers up to and including the jumping out of the plane scene. And you're I mean, also indeed, like though. destroying your career because you're assisting in the robbery of a bank, which goes against like you're going to lose your job as an agent. Yeah, but isn't yeah. he undercover? Like, let's I don't want to like talk about another piece of pop culture, but, you know, like True Detective with Matt McConaughey's character who's like literally was underground in he was like in deep where he had to get tattoos or like you know from 21 jump street johnny depp at the end when he's like i've literally been undercover with these guys for years i think you think i want these tattoos man you know (laughs) and then the same thing in you know you think in in the same thing in the holidays start here at bakers with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto. Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Point break when they hit, you know, when they hit the guy's house, the Red Hot Chili Peppers house, and you have that one guy that's been undercover. He's like, you think I like this hair? You know, and he's all pissed <laughs> off at him. Like, you have to do... If you're undercover, like, you need to do what, you know... You, your main priority is to take these guys down. And, you know... Yeah. Somebody gets so in then, the way of that. They're getting in the way of the investigation. And, you know... I well, just, then, you know, so what are you going to do? If you could find a way to, like... You know, they have those internal alarms that you trigger... And that you trigger inside the bank, you know, like, while yeah. they're robbing it. Like, maybe try to find a way to slip around and press that under-the-counter button that they always have in you know in the movie scenario in the scenarios you know try to get the cops called try to get them surrounded to where it's like a like like a hopeless situation and then just like if you can get behind him like blow them all away or you know. <laughs> yeah. like i forget uh, does i mean it's kind of super random when they take uh johnny utah on that bank hit right it's like he doesn't even know what's happening they're just like here's a gun so you couldn't yeah, have exactly. coordinate yeah you couldn't have coordinated. Yeah, they don't even give him a mask do they no just like, they say oh no more masks and also, the gun he has isn't loaded. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Because they're kind of oh. seeing what he is, you know? Um, yeah. yeah it's a hard, I, I would probably just play along. I would, yeah. I would just play along and, like, try to win it later at that point. Um, yeah, I think that would be the most logical thing in my head. I try to, you know, if I, if I could get them, if I could get them trapped and we could settle everything at the bank, then I would... You know, I already know where their plane is. They already took him skydiving once before. You know, I know where the drop zone is. You know, we say tell the cops like, "Hey, we got to go to the we got to go to the airport. We got to, you know, save my girl." You know, so let's let's go there. Let's get some guys with the masks on, you know. Let's pretend like let's all jump out and pretend like we're all walking up so that the guy exposes himself with the lady and then we just blow him away right there, you know. Um 
So I try, I try to get things stomped at the bank, you know, try to get them surrounded, try to find a way to alert the local police, you know, get them surrounded so that they, they can't get away from there. And then once we settle things there, then I take off on the plane and I try to try to decoy myself or, you know, try to try to fool the guy into letting my lady go. Um, and then if it doesn't work out, I guess it's OK, because I guess she wasn't all that great anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we established that right in the beginning. But what about this, too? What about, like... Yeah, uh, we took, like, five minutes to establish how it wasn't worth saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, what about this? Uh, I mean, do they have a getaway driver? Like, is there a driver? Yeah. They, yeah. I don't, is someone stay, does someone stay in the car? Someone might stay in the car. I don't remember. Because, like, at that point, I think I would, like, totally argue to be, like... All right, if you guys are hitting this, there's no more masks. Well, guess what? I'm staying in the car. I'll be the getaway driver. You guys go in, right? Mm-hmm. And then at that point when they go in, I would fucking rip off and just... But they're not going to let you do that. They're going to let me do it because if they don't, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> I don't know. I, like, maybe try to get the gun from the security guard. Like, I know he doesn't know that that one cop is an under, like, a off-duty cop, but maybe yeah. try to get the security guard's gun. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, yeah, just going I guess along the, I guess, seems seems like the, the it seems like the way. safest, but I mean, it seems like the most concrete way to get these guys put in. Because you know, I mean, if you get caught, a you're risking you know them killing you, and just completely never getting them, you know, never letting them get the chance to even be um, arrested. So I think I'll just play along. And, uh, yeah, it just, uh, you know, go to witness protection afterwards. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, if you, if you let Sands, the, uh, the unknown undercover cop, right, that was the off-duty cop that was at the bank, let's say everything goes totally fine. You totally play through all the way. Patrick Swayze is a man of his word, all right? He's a handsome guy. You know, at the end, they really do let her go, you know, and they take off with the, uh, with the money, you know? Yeah. So let's say everything goes through. They, we, we jump out. We land. They let her go. They get away scot-free. Well, you just keep like you just keep looking for them. You know what I mean? Like you build your case. It takes years. A lot of this stuff takes years anyway to build cases against people. You yeah. already know who they are. You know, you put out APBs on all the surf beaches around the world. Yeah, you know, you know where he's just, going. You, yeah. I mean, Utah knew where he was going. He's going to... What what wave? Australia. He to ride, he's going to Australia, Australia to ride the ride yeah. that wave. And one I mean, at the end, one more wave then you can take me in. Okay, you gotta go down. Yeah, yeah, great final scene. Yeah. Yeah, no. well, I'm not gonna dog paddle to New Zealand. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. He's not coming back. <laughs> we'll get That's him when he comes way. back in. <laughs> um, and this last one's a really open ended one. I'm so excited. Uh, it's any first person shooter if you were to be dropped in. So that's Fortnite, Overwatch, Apex Legends, whatever. Like what's your strategy? As if you're really in that situation, like you, not a character, with the assumption that you start with whatever weapon you would start with in the game and you play the game as designed. You mm-hmm. as a person, again, you're not a character, so Yeah. You know, I have any powers, I'm not lifeline. Yeah. Not yeah. Like if it's life. Fortnite and you drop in with a a machine gun. I don't, I've never played Fortnite, so I don't know all the, the trappings. Yeah. You know, you're, you find yourself in that situation. Or do you immediately just start killing as many people as possible? Or do you, <laughs> what do you do? Not. What's your strategy? I mean, I'm definitely not jumping where everybody's going. If that's what you're asking me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking to the outskirts. This is, this was my strategy before I learned anything about apex, you know, and I still try to kind of try to do it because in all these games, these games, particularly the Battle Royale ones, there's always a, an ever-closing-in, like, force field or zone in which you can play, like a play. It's a matter area. of time. It's a matter of time before you get action. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to... I'm like a sniper. Like, I, <laughs> I... My skills... Well, my skills as a human being, you know, are better, I would say, than my skills in the video game realm when it comes to firearms. Uh, so I, I'm actually pretty, I would feel pretty confident in my ability to survive, but I'm like trying to be stealthy, you know, trying to sneak around, maybe get a, try to find a long range weapon. Uh, I am definitely killing anybody I come across. Like I can't <laughs> see unless like it was, you know, I mean, and especially in these battle royale ones, there's usually, and except for Fortnite's a single player, but things like Overwatch and Apex Legends, you have teams. So, you know, I'm trying to find if there's any if there's any way to find somebody that I could team up with, whether they're from the same, you know, kind of area or whether I know them from outside, you know, um, 
then I then I would do that. But no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not trusting anybody when it comes to one on one, one v one. Uh, you know, if I see you, Cam, and you, Chris, then maybe we could. Well, Chris, I don't know if you, you know. Ouch. <laughs> Chris, Chris didn't make the cut. <laughs> no, Chris. You're Donzo. Yeah. That's okay. I'm a sniper. I'm a sneaker. I'm killing yeah. everybody. Yeah. You ever seen the movie Role Models? When, yeah. like, you've never mm-hmm. seen Role Models with you've Paul Rudd? You've seen Role Models and, with uh, uh, Paul Rudd? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're doing the LARPing. It's the one with the LARPing and the Sean Minotaur. William Scott. Yeah, where they dress up like Kiss at the end for the big LARPing event. Well, anyways, they like, I just, you know, I would, you know, they everybody hands, hates a camper. Um, but if this was a real life scenario and it was like, I get, I'm get, i not coming back if I die, you know, yeah. it would, yeah. I would literally let them fight each other off. And then when, yes. uh, and like in role models, he thinks, you know, he, the main character fights the king and has the big battle at the scene, you know, and then, uh, you know, he wins and he's like, yes, I, I won the battle royale. And the girl comes up that he has a crush with or has a crush on the entire movie. And she just literally stabs him right there. And then she wins. She's like, oh, yeah, I hid in the bushes the entire time. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys so, seen uh, have you guys seen series seven? No, no. Is that, that the one that's on HBO or wait? It's, is it's that a series or a movie? Film. It's a it's a movie, and it's an That's, indie movie. Basically, I, it's like nationwide yeah. uh, battle royale. They choose ten people randomly. It's like a lottery in the United States where they're given a gun and they're you know uh, and a tracker, and they have to go kill all the other contestants. It's, and it's done like super low budget, but it's really well done. Yeah. It's just like if this was like some sort of lottery that the like a like a purge style thing where it's like yeah. you know somebody comes into your door. Cameron says, you're it. Now you have to go kill, you have to go find and kill everybody else that, you know, that has been chosen, you know, and you get a little pamphlet and you see who they are and where they live. Oh, I think I've seen this before. It's It's called Series 7 or Series 8 or whatever. It sounds Series 7. I was thinking of Sense 8, which was on HBO. But yeah, Series 7. Because it's the seventh time they've done it. And there's like a returning champion person. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who comes back, yeah. What, Series? So you would... Cameron, you would camp. Izzy, you would snipe. I would yeah. snipe. But the thing is, is, is if we're talking about like, I know, I don't know about Fortnite and Overwatch, but when it comes to Apex Legends, you are, well, actually you just, you can just kill people and take their stuff. But um, the more damage you do, the uh, more powerful your shield gets. It's called the Evo shield. So the more you shoot at people, the more you shoot people and do and deal out damage, your the the ability of your shield to take damage increases. So you can get like the last one's called the red shield. So, mm. um, so I would you know you can't you can't just camp because then your team that hasn't done anything has been camping the whole round goes against a team that's been fighting their way this whole time and they've got all the gear they've got all the shields you know and they're really powered up on all their abilities. So um, Apex Legend I would have to, you have to you have to be aggressive. Well, typically you have to be aggressive. You know? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's all the scenarios I got. <laughs> that's cool, man. I appreciate cool. that. Cool. No, that was great. They were, yeah. I mean, I had a lot of uh, a lot of fun guessing them <laughs> and smoking, dusting kids and, you know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of know, kids beating the shit out of Iron Man world. right off yeah, the bat. Yeah, we talked a lot about kid death, you know, a lot about stretchy dongs. This is stretchy very dongs good. good. It's a very good, yeah, it's a very well-rounded episode. <laughs> uh, well, that's well, awesome. Um do you guys want to get to the fan question? Yeah, I would love to get to the fan question. Which one is it? Who's it from? Uh, this one's from Trent via email. What's something that's happened to the military that outsiders would find really weird? Like somebody, something that is completely normal to people serving, but is actually weird. Like weird to somebody from the outside. Um, okay, yeah, so this would probably be an easy one, but it's like sharing very personal items or being very, very close with other people to the point where other people would think it's gay, but it's not. Yeah, yep, there's a lot of close quarter stuff, like, like, I, I've shared this before, like, me and this dude were on, uh, we're on Overwatch for an ambush, and everybody was back getting prepped, and they were coming there, making their way, and we were waiting there for hours. And we were like little frosted flakes because the sun was, it was right before the sun comes up that early morning oh, twilight. That, yeah. It's the coldest it's going to be during the day because all that cold air is getting pushed along by that sun that's coming. And he comes over and he just lays on top of me. Yeah. And he's like, it, he's super right, normal. Because he, he just wanted the body heat. You know, he's like, it's, yeah. it's all, and I, and I didn't mind. I'm like, yeah, it's cool, man. Whatever. Yeah, totally. And fine. He, yeah. So, 
So yeah, we just like, shared body. Not even gay. Not yeah, even not gay. even gay. Not even gay. It was, there's things called a man. You ever heard of a man Ferno, Chris? The man Ferno. The man Ferno. It's essentially a bunch of dudes, and you, it's when it's really cold outside. You do a man Ferno. It's pretty. You have one dude in the middle, like just hunched over, pretty much like uh, like chin on chest, like just making sure all the their legs and arms are tucked together just to create, you know, this this body warmth. And then people just start coming in and just attaching themselves to him in the same scenario. So then you just have a bunch of people just in this small, it's like a penguin huddle. Like, you know how penguins all huddle yeah. together like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we call it a manferno. manferno. And you do that. And it can, I've seen them get like 30, 40 people big where the dude in the middle starts <laughs> sweating. And it could be like 20 degrees outside, but it's so awesome. I remember in ranger school, uh, we did a Manferno when it was raining one time that it was, it was, and this was the biggest one I was a part of. And we, we got so advanced that we started putting ponchos above us. So you would just, if you got out of the Manferno, which was like, you were literally crawling through people, like one of the most aggressive mosh pits you've ever been in. Like, it was like that, just like trying to squig by people. And then I got out of it and I looked and there was just steam coming up <laughs> oh like on a man, like it looked like whatever was underneath the poncho was on fire and all the smoke was escaping and i was like that's badass <laughs> the man heat manferno so that might be weird to somebody that's not in the military yeah that's pretty weird not yeah. gonna lie <laughs> yeah, <that's super laughs> i was gonna play it cool and be like guys that's not weird at all but no that's that's weird yeah the manferno <laughs> it's legendary and it is super helpful but we hope that answered your question, uh, Trent. I'm sure there's a lot more that there is to mention that's super weird that military people do. But uh, I think that's that's think one just... Of the, one of the weirdest things, Cameron, you said was when those ladies that were going to ranger school with you were sharing their little stand-up oh, device. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's not just weird. That was disgusting. weird. Yeah, the FUD, the female yeah. urinary distraction device. Yeah, that was that. I thought that was weird. But, you know, Can that I... might be just a, yeah. a me <laughs> thing. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's how, you know... Diseases move around, but... Yeah, but it was completely normal to them, which, you know... Are you guys ready for a game? I am ready Let's for the it. game, Chris. Okay, so... This is how I wrote it. <laughs> now that I'm reading it, I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> well, well, well. It's time for an actual pop quiz. That's the name of the game, an actual pop quiz. I'm going to ask you trivia questions, and you simply have to answer them. Cool. Don't fret. The questions will be military-based. There's no warm up. Okay, that's fine. These are all military questions, okay? okay? All right. Question number one. What year, and I think we've done this before, but at least this question, but what year did World War II end? Ooh. Uh, everyone knows when it started. Nobody knows when it ended. <laughs> I think 1945. I feel like 1945 is the limit. That's when we want. Because 1946 just sounds weird. It does. It does. But how long was the campaign? Because it started December in 7, June. 1941. June yeah. 6, 1945. 1944. Yeah, 19... Yeah, I'm going to say 1945. Yeah, that sounds right. That is correct. It's 1945. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. We get to both, keep saving Private Ryan cards. I know, right? Both in yeah. Europe and in Japan, which Japan yeah. is actually the end of World War II. When we You're right. There's, there's V-Day and then... Was it V-J it's, Day? It's V-E Day and V-J Day. Yeah. V-J Day. All right. What year did the war in Iraq, Operation Iraqi Freedom, begin? It was uh, 2001. Operation 2001. Yeah, that yeah. was before. I remember it was snowing in Colorado, and we watched like the ta- the ticker count down from Bush's ultimatum from the invasion. I remember we I was in Denver at the time. So that is incorrect. Oh, 2005. What? I'm sorry, 2005. 2003. Oh, is when what? In 2001, we invaded Afghanistan. Afghanistan was oh, the initial invasion. Afghanistan. And I write, 2003, that was 2003? Oh, my God. After Hang much right now. cavorting and <laughs> trying to figure out how we could attack Iraq, we that? found weapons of mass destruction, and then in 2003, we invaded. 2003, yeah. March 20th. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, March okay, of 2003. That was de- I was definitely in Denver, and it was snowing when that all went down. <laughs> that yeah, it, snows, it snows in March in Denver. Okay. Right, Don't feel wow. bad. I mean, feel a little bad. You fought in that war. Okay. I literally fought in that war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next question. What does Semper Fidelis, the Marine Corps motto, mean? Crans taste good. 
<laughs> it's it's between it's between crayons taste good and born in a gay bar. Uh, <laughs> I thought uh, it, I thought it, I thought it always meant uh, simple fries. Like they don't like eating complicated or very tasty fries. That means, uh, Cameron, do you know? No, man. I've actually. <laughs> you don't know the actual answer. No, you I don't, don't know. What simple fries. It's uh, simple fidelis means always faithful. That is correct. Always faithful. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, see, yeah, I think it's simple. This yeah, next one's always. a fun fact, in case you didn't know. Out of the 46 U.S. presidents, how many served in the military? Oh, it's cool. very low. It's very low. I mean, George Washington. George Washington. Oh, Jesus. Was... Do not go through every single president. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm going to say Adams. it's very low. I think That's... there was like six of them. There was like five or six because Theodore Roosevelt served. Yeah, Bush was in the Army. He was in the Na- Air National Guard in Texas. Does that yeah. count? Does that even that count? That counts. That counts. I'm going to say six. Six? I'm going to say four. It's 30. Oh. Really? Whoa, okay, it's, a, it's a large number. I thought it was very yeah. small. Oh, I mean, when, if I you and I'll give you a little you know, bonus Texas fact, too. <laughs> a little then bonus yeah, fact. 24 of them served during time of war. Wow. Nice. And two earned the rank of five-star general, George Washington, who was promoted posthumously to a six-star general in 1976, and Eisenhower, and one earned the Medal of Honor. Do you know who earned the Medal of Honor? No. Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah, Teddy. Really? So was there that you with go. the Rough Riders? Yeah. Oh, that I don't know. That wasn't on the little blurb I found. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't, well, uh, in case you didn't know, didn't this know isn't just... 30, wow. Yeah, 30. Well, you got to think about it. A lot of them, you know, my knife. were that, in the uh, military at some point, because back then, that's what you did. Yep. Yeah, that, that sets you up well you for a political career, too. Yeah. You, yeah. you were like a warrior. Like John F. Kennedy was in the military. He served in World War II. Uh, no Lyndon kidding. Johnson, I think. No way. Huh? Yeah, you've never was heard of PT, PT 109? PT 109. Was there a movie about that? I don't know if there's specifically a movie, but that's the boat oh, okay. that uh, John F. Kennedy served on. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling you, lots of people served because that's what you did. That's what you did back then. That's what you did. That's super right. interesting. I'm learning a lot, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this next one, I don't think you're going to get it, but I'm going to ask it. How many Ranger battalions are there? What do you mean, how many Ranger Battalions are there? How many like Ranger right Battalions now? are there? Um, well, there, this is a trick question, because some people think like 5th, there are 4th, 5th, and 6th, which are Ranger Training Brigades, so I hope you're not counting those, but currently, there are 4. I mean, that is correct. With, okay, I'm going to go with Cam. Yeah. I'm retroactively <laughs> going to go with Cam. Yeah, currently four. there are 4. There is Sorry, that, that was more for Cam than for you. Wait, yeah, if I got that wrong, I should go shoot my... I was like, if I got that question wrong, I was going to ask the audience, you know what it sounds like when someone slices a throat? And I was going <laughs> to cut my neck and just seep into the microphone. Um, but no, there's first Ranger Battalion, second, third, and then there is the new MI Battalion. But then there's also uh, special troops. So actually, no, there's five. Well, according to the Army Ranger website, there's four. Four? That's interesting. Yeah, although okay. I found stuff that said five, and I found stuff that said three. So, okay. anyway. Yeah, well, now I will say it's five. It used to be four because it was one, two, three, STB, which is Special Troops Battalion, and then they added recently uh, MI Battalion. So, technically, there's five, I think. Well, we need to write a strongly worded letter to the Army Ranger website and tell them to update it. Sure. Yep. Okay. You'll get right on that? Okay. Next question. Who is the first person to break the sound barrier? Oh, Tom Hanks. No, it, it was Tom Hanks. God damn, you're good at this. <laughs> what Sam, did he play Sam, that guy in the movie? Sam. No, Shepherd. he did not. He uh, didn't play that guy. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, this is in the right stuff, isn't it? So and that's what uh, the right stuff is all about. Yeah. Oh, or the God, space program again. But. I think it's Sam, I think it's Sam Shepard uh, is the uh, guy who does it, but he plays a real life. Person. He does, and this is terrible because I just went to Disneyland, uh, Soren, uh, Soren, Ameri- or what is it, Soren, California used to be, but now it's whatever, and they had all the names of like important uh, aeronauts, if you will. What are they? What are they? Or pilots? And I read. I mean, one. this is also just Burbank. something you should know. He was an American hero. Yeah, he yeah. was. He was, and he did it out of Burbank, California, and it was. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what his name is because I did not give a shit, and I was like, it's on you the know, tip of my tongue, Captain. 
Chuck Jaeger. Jaeger? Was it Chuck Jaeger? Chuck Jaeger. Yeah. Oh, Jaegermeister. First person yeah. on Oh, Earth. yeah, Jaegermeister. I'm just making that up like I know. You know, <laughs> they're giving him a nickname like we're personal friends. Oh, yeah, the Jaegermeister. Yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. Chuck Jaeger. Yeggs. Yeggy. Yeggy and Bacon. Yo- Jaeger Bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. No, yeah, Captain Chuck Jaeger. Okay, I'm going to write that one I down. would say you guys should live stream the right stuff. That movie's like four hours long. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's long. <laughs> I saw it at uh, most recently. I saw that movie at a special screening at the uh, Hollywood VA Post Forty Three or American Legion Post Forty Three over on Highland at their big screen. It was really cool to see on a big screen. It was really fun. That's cool. All right. Very good. All right. Final well, not question. Very good. We totally. Well, not that very one good. Up. I just meant very good for me for coming up with a stumper. Um, yeah. That was for me. I'm, most of the time, I'm praising myself. Sure. Uh, You'll know the answer. I hope you know the answer to this last one. How many rounds does a standard M4 magazine hold? 30. 30. 30 it is. See, I knew you'd know the answer to that one. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently people make their own and they hold 100. Yeah. What? You can get 100 100 rounder. Yeah. All right. That's the game. Good job, Uh, guys. Good stuff. Good trivia questions. Yeah. No, very appropriate to this episode. Thanks, Chris. This was a really fun one, my dude. Yeah, it's always good to do a show with you as well, Chris. I like you more than Cram Cam does. Oh, yeah. no. Thanks. I, I mean, not yet. I'll remember that come Christmas time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So that means you'll expect a bigger present from Izzy than from me. <laughs> oh, wait. What have I done? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Well, folks, that's all we got for you today. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the PCFM podcast. Let us know by... Oh, I don't fucking know what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Just wrap it up. <laughs> nah, I'm just going to wrap it up. That's all right. I was going into something overcomplicated. But we hope you enjoyed this one, and we will catch you on that next one. Cue music. What's going on, everybody? You just listened to the free version of the PCFM podcast. If you want full-length versions of podcast episodes, plus much, much more, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash podcast. That is right, Israel. If you want access to this full episode, you have to subscribe to the Fuzzy Private tier, which is our cheapest tier on Patreon at $5 a month. But if you are interested in a little bit more, We also have the Salty Sergeant tier at $8 a month and the Lifer tier at $12 a month. So hopefully we will see you there, PCFM family. Cue music. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Baker's, fresh for everyone. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Baker's, fresh for everyone.